Number 98. Which of these molecules and ions contain polar bonds, and which of these molecules and ions have a dipole moment? And then we have BrCl4 minus. Okay, so I do see that we have a charge up here, which means that we're in ion territory. Ion just means that it's a charged species, whether it's positive or negative. Now, the first question they asked was, does BrCl4 minus have polar bonds? Now, the key here is that they're looking for a specific bond, right? And bonds are what are holding up two elements together of a covalent compound. So whether it's a double, triple, single bond, right? But if I'm just looking at BrCl4 minus, do I see any bonds? No, I don't see them, do you? No. So the first thing here that I can recommend is, especially if they're asking for polar bonds, polarity in general, dipole moments, just take a step back and draw the Lua structure. The Lua structure is going to give you a lot of information. So it is one extra step, but it's a really, really great step to just write down quickly, um, just to see what you know, you're know you visualizing here. So there's tons of videos on the channel that go into learning how to draw the Lua structure. So if you do need more guidance, you could always check out those videos. Um, but this one will kind of be like a quickened uh, review. So you could pause the video and see if your BrCl4 minus uh, Lewis structure matches mine. So in this case, we have bromine in the middle. So Br in the middle, surrounded by the four chlorines. One, two, whoa, two, three, and four. And now we'll work on the chlorines. Each chlorine has to have a single bond because they have seven balanced electrons. Um, and then they need those six dots to get the octet. All right, so that's what's going on with the chlorines. Now we're going to be working with the bromine. Bromine has um, seven valence electrons. It is using, let's see how many it's using right now. So it's using one, two, three, four of them. So it has three extra valence electrons, but this minus means that you gained one. So you actually have four valence electrons left. So two lone pairs, okay. Now, uh, actually, before we even do that, it's an, it's an ion, so I do have to basically bracket this and throw the negative in the upper right-hand corner. Now we have the full Lewis structure, and we can clearly see the bonds now. And they're all equivalent. It's a chlorine bound to a bromine, no matter which connection you're looking at. So, since we're looking for whether it's a polar bond, you just pull one of them out. So maybe I'll put the chlorine on the left, and then we'll have the bond between the bromine. Now, if you want to find out if something has a polar bond, all you have to do is find out those electronegativities and take the difference between them. Now, the difference is just a fancy way for saying subtraction. So you're going to take those electronegativities, subtract them, and if the difference, the subtraction, is in between 0.4 and 1.8, congratulations, that bond is a polar bond which just means that there's an unequal distribution of electrons in that bond. It's maybe favoring more chlorine or bromine. It always favors the more electronegative element. So I'm going to get those electronegativities. Chlorine is 3.0, so I'll write that down. So 3.0 for electronegativity, and bromine is a 2.8, so super, super, super close. When you're taking your electronegativity difference, your answer should always be the positive. So it's just easy to always take the higher number and subtract by the lower number. And when we do that, 3.0 minus 0 0.8, that's a 0 0.2. Does this fall in the range of being a polar bond? Mm, not really, it's lower than 0.4. So this is not a polar bond. What bond would this be? Well, if you're covalent and you are not polar, you are nonpolar. So nonpolar bond is what these bonds are. So instead of being polar bonds, we have nonpolar bonds. So that answers the first part. Now we want to know if this ion as a whole has a dipole moment. A dipole moment basically is now taking the ion 
um, and viewing it as one whole ion and saying, is there an uneven distribution of electrons in this whole thing? Well, this is where SNAP comes into play, S-N-A-P. If everything is symmetrical around your molecule, you have a nonpolar molecule or a nonpolar atom or nonpolar ion. But now we're going to we're going to zone in here because if you're polar, that molecule is asymmetrical and dipole moments only exist if you have a polar molecule as a whole or in this case a polar ion. Now here's a really really good trick and something super important to know that if your central atom has lone electrons, so you're looking for dots, if it has those lone electrons, it is automatically always, always, always polar, no exceptions. So maybe you might say, wait a minute, I have all four chlorines. That's pretty symmetrical. But the bromine has four electrons, it's got four dots, two lone pairs. It does have lone electrons, lone pairs, that's central atom. So you don't even have to look at what it's bound to. If that central atom has dots, it is automatically a polar ion. And because of that, it has a dipole moment. And that is the final answer for this one. So it's got nonpolar bonds. However, the molecule is polar because of those electrons in the center. And that's it. There you go. I hope this helped you out. Thank you for coming to the channel to get your, you know, chemistry uh, answers with your certain topics, Lewis structures. I mean, we have well, basically a whole chapter. And not a whole chapter. We got a whole textbook out there for you guys. We got two semesters of chemistry, one whole year of chem um, if you're in high school. We also have a whole year of physics. Um, we got tons of math problems just to help you guys, you know, succeed in your classes. So go check the channel out. My brother and I, we are thankful for all you guys. We're so grateful that we're building, you know, this community that can help you guys out in your classes. So just keep studying hard. I'll talk to you later. And yeah, have a good day. Bye-bye.